Hey everyone, John Henry here, SlingshotFutures.com, and welcome to the Market Mindset, where we take a look at the moves in the market psychology today so we can better understand tomorrow. And today, we're taking a look at gold. Now, overall, gold ended up as just a big old range today, and with a range, we pretty much know what to do. We're looking to sell high, we're looking to buy low, and try to stay out of the middle as much as possible. But when it comes to executing that, it can be kind of difficult sometimes, and it can be a little tricky and whip you out where eh, you might not have, uh, you know, you should have been able to hang on to it if you were paying attention to what price was doing. Now, today, we opened up with this really, really just gross looking bull candle. And that's generally not the type of candle that you wanna see for a strong breakout type day. That's usually not one that's gonna kick off, you know, a 60 point move. Now it followed it up with a nice bull candle here, but now at that point, we're almost too late. We've already seen the weakness from the buyers here. What's to tell us that this isn't just going to be a trap and turn back around in the other direction? And that's exactly what it was. As soon as the buyers tried getting it going, it completely failed and turned back around. The third candle of the day was a failure. Now, doing a little bit of candle math, we can see that this is actually a pretty strong first 15 minutes of the day, right? We opened up with a brick bottom. There's no wick on the bottom and a little bit of a wick on the top, but it closed fairly strong, certainly above the top 25% of the candle. So we need to wait for a little more information before we start jumping into the sell side thinking, well, you know, I've seen this a million times already. There's a lot of weakness here. I need to be short, but there's still a good chunk of bullish pressure here that we need to wait for it to subside. We see the sellers try to take it once, good bearish follow through, and then it completely fell apart and dried up. So we're waiting for the sellers to come in again. See them push down once, make a lower high and push down again. That's where we want to start looking for possible continuation to the downside. And a lot of sellers are going to be thinking the same thing because they see this bullish pressure here. There are a lot of buyers, even though it may not be that great, there are a lot of buyers who are looking to buy the pullback, hoping for a quick snap to the highs. Now you'll notice a little bit later it did happen. Uh, but I'm looking at this thinking, yeah, the buyers don't really have a whole lot of an argument. And even if it does go to the high, the chances are there's just going to be a bunch of sellers up there anyway. So I'm looking to sell this for a continuation move to the downside to complete the range, go back down to the bottom of the range. And that is where the first opportunity of the day came in. Nice little sell opportunity. Uh, it took a while. <laughs> it took a good 50 minutes to an hour or so for it to actually get down there. But before it did, one key thing of interest, right? Knowing that the buyers are buying into this, we have a small little gap. There's probably going to be buyers that are buying into that move. And again, bad follow through. First candle of the day was horrendous. We know that even though they are going to be buying into that, they're probably only going to be looking for the highs. And if that's the case with all of this bad follow through and just a terrible case for the buyers, there's probably just going to be a bunch of sellers up there. As soon as it pushed back up into that area, went one, I think it went four ticks above it, and immediately 20 tick drop right back down to the downside, all the way down to the lows. This is what we commonly call a sucker stop. Very frequently, you're going to see a situation like this where you get into a short position, you're looking for it to go, bad follow through, but it's still the argument is to the downside, continuing to go lower, fails, lower, comes really, really close, maybe your target was floating right there, maybe a little bit lower, either way, came really close to the target, that makes traders nervous. And what do they do? They move their stop to break even or they reduce the risk. Well, very commonly, what you're going to see happen on this kind of day where there's so much back and forth, it'll slap higher with everybody out of the trade just for the big boys to get in, right? You're talking Goldman Sachs and some of the guys with the billion dollar accounts. They're jumping in and slamming it back down in the original direction. And very commonly, I'm sure everybody's been on the wrong side of this. You get whipped out to the tick just to see it fall in your direction. Now in the room, we avoided this by knowing what was going on, but just a great example of a sucker stop. It happens all the time. And when you can pick up on it, you can play around it a little bit. Overall, beautiful move down into the objectives towards the lows. And once we start hitting the lows, what are we thinking? Well, we're thinking, high of a range, down to a low of a range, what's probably gonna happen down here? We're gonna look for buyers to come in. But the same thing that we saw here, I don't wanna sell the first attempt, I don't wanna buy the first attempt. Generally, when you're early to the party, you're gonna have to sit and take a little bit of heat sometimes, and there are chances that you're gonna be wrong. Waiting for a little bit more information does usually mean you're gonna get a worse entry, but that's the price that you pay for that extra information. We see a cycle off the lows, a twin reversal back up, 
followed by buyers holding support off of the megaphone low for a beautiful bullish signal bar to get in and kick the move off towards the highs of the range. And where are we now, my friends? We are at the highs of a range. What's probably going to happen up here? Well, we're probably going to find some sellers up here. But Either way, that's the morning session in a nutshell. Just a beautiful psychological trading type day. And if you're able to stay on board and understand what's happening, you were able to trade today quite well. So that's going to do it for this one. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you found it interesting. And we'll see you next time.